Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, uh, I've got another student, uh, Jar Bread, who has been with me again for uh, a little bit. And I wanted to, again, get invite him on um, a video and get his um, perspective and uh, experience, I guess, get his from his own words as to how he's found Trading 180, the mentoring that I provided, and, um, you know, uh, how his trading has really kind of transformed and, and, and changed, you know, for the better. So, uh, yes, Jarbred, how you doing? You okay? Hey, blessings, brother. I give thanks for being on your podcast, and um, I give thanks for having this time to share with you. I'm doing well, man. I'm looking forward to, to chopping it up and and hopefully sharing some of the benefits that I get from you so that others might find those benefits too. Ah, brilliant. Thank you very much. So um, give us a, just a little bit maybe about your background and how you kind of got into trading Forex. Yeah, so I'm a, um, I'm a priest. I'm an I'm a Episcopal. Uh, I'm, I was ordained in the Episcopal Church. I don't go by demon nations, but I'm a priest okay. um, who's kind of been exile from the church oh, wow. um you know kind of like if for those following american football you familiar with colin kaepernick and how he took a knee and people got upset and he's no longer playing football in similar vein you know i started talking about where things were going with white supremacy and everything and the church was like yeah you gotta go wow. um and so i kind of stumbled into trading from there right. um another pastor friend that i knew that I had here in Central Florida, where I live, um, introduced me to Forex through iMarkets. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar, anybody familiar with iMarkets. I don't even know if it's still around, but um, it's a, it was one of those pyramid scheme things, multi-level marketing things. Um, and it, but it introduced me to Forex, and but I knew quickly because I'm one of those intellectual types. I like to read and figure things out, so mm -hmm. I learned quickly that they weren't really trading they were selling you the dream of trading mm. so I, I gave thanks for the opportunity because i didn't i wasn't aware of the currency market so i gave thanks for the opportunity to become aware of the currency market it really hit to me because again i deal with geopolitics all the time and so the idea that um my studies of geopolitics might actually fund my lifestyle i'm like cool that's two birds with one stone um, so I dove even deeper into it. And, I, you know, again, being that intellectual type, I started off by reading, you know, all of those books, you know, high, um, Marcel Link's um, High Probability Trading. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I read some Van Tharp early on. So, yeah. you know, I, I, like heavy stuff for early yeah. on. So I, 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 I was never in the, you know, just trading to trade thing, the the just pure technicals, just this going up today, let me trade it. This is going down today, let me trade it. Um, I've always wanted to understand things on a deeper level. That's how I got into Ichimoku, actually, right. um, because Ichimoku kind of slows things down. It makes you look at a longer horizon. Okay. Um, and so stumbling across your videos again, I don't know if we said this in the recorded part or not, but stumbling across your videos, I said a lot of people and, and some great guys that I'm still do stuff with, um, but just I learned completely different skills with. Um, but listening to your videos, this was I was like, man, this is this is how I want to look at things. You know, I, I want to be able to understand the deeper levels, the deeper realities of things. Um, because it fits with my, my, my vocation, my work. Mm. Um, and so it's like a symbiotic whole. It kind of marries together very well for me, understanding what's going on in, in, in geopolitics and the economies, or knowing that economies drive geopolitics and just understanding those deep relationships help me in my work with my mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. um, and so I needed to get to a point where I was slowing things down and moving beyond just technical charts. And it was Trading 180, it was your videos that helped me to do that. And so I stumbled across your videos and I was like, yeah, this is what I wanna, this is how I wanna look at things. I need to be in a group like this because I need to be around, I need to be around other people who are thinking this way. We may not agree. I'm not expecting anyone to agree with me. I didn't come into it expecting agreement. What I, what I expected was a space where 
people are paying attention to the fundamentals mm. um, and they're not just going to be, you know, a, 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 a sounding board in the terms of, you know, uh, echo chamber would be the better yeah. word. They're not just going to be, you know, teach me your style, give me your signals, you know, let me go trade what you trade. Um, these are going to, I'm going to find a room of thinkers where I can hold to my crazy ideas and have them maybe probe, maybe refined, maybe shaped, maybe shot down by a group of people that I trust at least know fundamentally what's going on. Right. Right. And so that's how I got into trading and got full circle to being with you. That's very interesting. A lot to unpack there. A lot to unpack. And <laughs> <laughs> so many different uh, directions we could go in. But it's funny you say, um, what, what was it? The multi-level marketing um, uh, thing? that <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah, Because yeah, I, was, yeah. I was speaking to a trader the other day who's recently, I would say recently just joined, maybe joined a few months, maybe in the last intake. And he said pretty much the same thing. He kind of got into trading, but he ended up... Um, uh, being in uh, some sort of multi-level marketing thing where it's about kind of selling courses rather than right. actual actual trading. Do you know what I mean? And right. then exactly similar to you, it's like then he kind of realized, oh, in fact, you know what? There is a trading thing behind this, right? You know what I mean? There is a way to make money actually trading. So, right. um, and what's quite interesting is, is the fact that you were um, quite interested in geopolitics anyway and geopolitics um you know has um a direct connection really with fundamental analysis right right so so you kind of came into it maybe different because a lot of traders don't always come into it knowing the fundamental analysis they get into it with the technicals straight away right just right purely technicals but you came into it from a different perspective and not realizing i guess that your geopolitical um uh uh, uh i guess um interest actually could make you money yeah you know that's that exactly and but when i quickly found that out right like when i started understanding you know what exactly are currency pairs mm -hmm. and 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 what's happening i'm like oh this is simply geopolitics mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm like oh and i can get paid for understanding geopolitics <laughs> yeah sign yeah. me up yeah that, that's it that's it right and um, it's it's I was never interested in kind of fundamentals. I got into it like everyone else as far as, you know, the, the technical side of things. And it was, you know, just I guess maybe it's a bit sidetracked. I got um, uh, got into fundamentals when my mentor, Mark Chapman, uh, told me about the euro dollar. So we got into uh, the euro dollar. He got into the euro dollar short around the time when quantitative easing was first being introduced around that 2013, 2014. And then when Grexit, when Greek was going to exit from the European Union, right? And mm -hmm. you, you see that the politics, you see the geopolitics and you see monetary policy play out in the currency markets. He was telling me to get short. Well, he didn't tell me outright, but because he couldn't, he's not a financial advisor, but he was hinting. And for, for, I'm telling you, Jarbread, I, I was so <laughs> driven on the technicals. I, I kept thinking that I could still go long at levels of support, right? And, right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, uh, right. Um, and, and the technicals that he was teaching where it was, levels were just being blown through, right? If you look at a, a euro dollar chart, you know, go back to that time, you actually, in fact, you'll see, in fact, it, it, this, this is going to be an interesting one, right? You'll see back in like 2014, 2015, we'll go back. Right, we'll go back and just delete this 2014 2015. You'll see this move right here. Here it was. There it right. is. There it is. Right, all Massive. the way down. Exactly. This was 2015, <laughs> right? And I kept trying to take the strategies <laughs> and kept trying to take them here and say, and not, not realizing the fundamentals. Of what we're driving things. exactly, yeah. and and like you said, the geopolitics was, was driving this massive move, right? Right, crazy, right? Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, um, a question for you, right? So, you why weren't you deterred 
by the failure statistics. So I don't know if you had heard that, you know, there's there's a, like a 90-90-90 rule, right? Where 90% mm-hmm. of traders yeah. lose 90% of their account in 90 days. Had you had you heard of that? Yeah, statistic? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear that statistic all the time. It's um it's it's ever present. Right. And you know? so what so what kept you going? Because a lot of traders listening um will call you know, trading a scam and that it can't be, you know, we, we, you can't make money from it, etc. And, you know, again, 90% of traders do actually end up giving up. So what is it that kept you going, um, you know, after maybe certain setbacks? Sure. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate having to think about that in, in, in this context, talking to you, um, I was because I have to say, because mm. I, 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 I was thinking about all the pad answers that I could give. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I just was determined, or you know, I had no other choice, or you mm. know, I told you I was blacklisted, and so I couldn't make any. Inc- you know, I could tell you all of those things, but if I'm if I'm real about it, and this is one of the things we talked about it in one of the calls. Mm-hmm. But this is one of the thing, the opportunities I think that a lot of us miss with trading is that. Um, Man, trading is my psychologist, mm. you know, and um, you learn a lot about yourself. And I appreciate learning about myself. I'm, I'm learning to appreciate learning about myself. Mm. Um, and in this quest to learn about myself, um, journaling my trades and you know, not just journaling my trade in terms of the technicals, but journaling, and not just the fundamentals, but journaling me in the trade, me taking the trade. Mm. Um, what was I thinking? Why was I thinking that? What was I doing? Why was I doing that? You know, what was going on when I was doing that? Um, you know, what happens when I trade if I've been in a bad headspace? Mm. Um, what happens when I, when, I, when I trade when I'm not in a bad headspace? What's the difference, you know? Um, what do I do differently? What routines, what recipes do I need? Um, you know, I'm trying to, I guess because I live in exile and have to fend for self in a, in a different kind of way, I understand that if it's all on me, I better be the best that I can be. Mm. And trading helps me get my mind right. Mm -hmm. So I guess the only reason I didn't quit because I have more than enough reasons to quit. <laughs> of, course, of course. All we need is one. You know, we can talk ourselves out of just one. You know what I mean? I guess the only reason I didn't quit is because um, I haven't quit giving, um, working on myself. And so trading is always there to help me see who, who am I. Um, especially when risk is on the line. Very, that's a very, very in-depth and interesting answer. And um, I concur, right? You find out so much about yourself when it comes to trading. You don't realize it at first, right? But then it forces you to think how to think. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you become more conscious, more conscious, more aware of how, you know, uh, like, why do I revenge trade? Why do I, yeah. um, why do I, um, <laughs> you know, why do I keep making the same mistake? Even yeah. though I said to myself, I'm never going to do this again. Do you know what I mean? Why haven't I got the discipline? I thought I was a disciplined person, yet I keep making these same mistakes over and over. Yeah. It, does, it forces you to examine yourself. It, Brother, really does, young, it really does. Young Jeezy, one of the one of the one of them young rappers over here. I don't know how young he is anymore. As young Jeezy say, "Women lie, men lie. Numbers don't lie." Numbers don't exactly. Numbers Num- don't. Numbers don't lie. And and, and I, I could tell you anything I want to tell you about who I am. You don't know me, mm. man. That trading account don't lie. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't lie. The numbers won't lie, right? And um, it's interesting we talk about, you know, psychology. So from, from, from a psychological perspective and psychology of trading, um, you know, maybe a, a go over maybe a concept or two of how maybe, you know, that's been introduced to you within 
trading 180 that you found, you know, you thought to yourself has been absolutely enlightening, mind blowing, maybe? Well, in terms of in terms of the group um, and, and psychology, I'd say the, the most compelling stuff has happened spur of the moment. Okay. I can't even, and, and that's one of those things that you got to be in the group to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Because it, it, it the, and I know there's, the, you know, the, 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 you have the psychological channel and things of that nature, but for me, the most compelling piece are the conversations that we stumble into on the group calls, right. where someone is bringing forward something in real time. Mm. and we're talking it through and then you know you may bring out you know from there there, there's the discussion group chain right because then then you start bringing out uh quotes or posts from a book that you've been reading and you know i'll do the same and we'll start having a further conversation yeah on something that just started as someone sharing in the group a, 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 a a struggle that was identified as a psychological struggle Mm. Um, and then just having that group where there are like-minded people that are going to share what they know from their perspective um, on that psychological struggle. Mm. Um, so that's why I say it's kind of the stuff that's happened spur of the moment um, more than any of the scripted opportunities that I know do exist. Okay, so, so, with, so, so maybe a bit more specific. Was is there something? What have you found out about yourself at Trading One Hundred and Eighty when being in Trading One Hundred and Eighty psychologically that you that you didn't really know before, maybe, or you weren't necessarily aware, or mm. maybe you were, maybe you were aware, <laughs> but didn't, wanna, but didn't know, know how to solve it. You're gonna be looking for right because <laughs> I, 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 I realized um, even. Even towards the end of this year, and I'm going on, I think, I, I think I'm going on two years with you now. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. And it was towards the end of this year where I realized how susceptible I still am to the crowd. Right. And it's kind of like you said earlier, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually on an island with, with, with my trade ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. E- even among y'all you know what I mean? even mm-hmm. among y'all I- i'll send out a trading idea and it'll be crickets like everybody be like yeah i'm, not <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you yeah. sure you sure okay mm. <laughs> uh, but we'll get into that a bit later and but, uh, yeah yeah come but in and you know i realized towards the end of this year that um i found myself taking trades that i did not agree with because that's because the trades that i that I was looking at weren't ready yet. They, they, they're just coming through. And like you said, we'll talk about that later. Mm. And I found myself still with that fear of missing out that had me um, taking trades that were not the trades that I take. Um, and so realize, like I said, realizing that I'm still susceptible to the crowd. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, and that's a growing edge for me. You know what I mean? It's like, mm. I appreciate you all, you know what I mean? But mm. by now I need to know that I should expect to be nine times out of 10 on the other side. Mm-hmm. And I should be okay with that. Mm. And, 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 and um, I, can't, I forget her name, but she wrote um, non-consensus trading, non-consensus investing. Um, just came out a little while ago. Brilliant book. Um, but she talks about being comfortable, being the odd man out, being the only one on that island. Um, and I realized that I still have that little inkling of wanting to be with some sort of crowd and how that, we all do, and how that, but, but how that then influences the trading. Right. You know, and, and, and then compels you to take risks that are not your risks to take. Mm. Mm. They may be risks for somebody else to take. And I can celebrate them. Some of the other guys in the, in the group, mm-hmm. you know, y'all have trades that, I, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going that way, but hey, 
go at it. You remember we had the group yeah. and I was like, one, one guy was a buyer and I was a seller. And I was like, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm ready to sell so you know yeah. when to get out. <laughs> I remember that was, that, was, that was the pound, that was the pound Ozzy, wasn't it? it was a, right, I think that. so. I think pound so. Ozzy, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 very interesting. But I realized that I'm still not, um, I still struggle with that comfort in standing alone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, 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 that's quite interesting because there's so many things I want to go off on and, <laughs> uh, you know, talk to you about, but we've only got, a, you know, a limited amount of time. But, um, you know, it, it's interesting you say that. And the reason why is because, you know, I always, uh, in the way that I was taught, I guess, was, um, you know, the saying, I guess I'll repeat this over and over again in the podcast is, you know, catch a man, sorry, uh, yeah, catch a man a fish or woman a fish or a person a fish. And they eat for a day. If you teach a person to fish, they eat for a lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. now the, the, the thing with uh, the Trading 180 group, ultimately, is we're not trying to create copycats. We're right. not trying to create that, yeah? We're trying right. to create independent traders so that if I was to, you know, some if I said... I'm not doing trading 180 no more or something was to happen to me or whatever it is. And you've been with me for, you know, a year or two. Yeah. Right. But what, what did you learn? Were you being spoon fed? Do you know right. what I mean? Because you can still what, trade. You, you, you'll be sad. I'll be sad that you ain't doing it no more. And I'll be like, yo, how can we continue talking? But I can still trade. Exactly. Exactly. And trade profitably, right? You can generate your own trade ideas. You know what's going on in the market. Know how Ooh. to track the fundamentals, Thank understand how to identify it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's that's the constant thing that you hammer on, you know, and it's it's interesting as 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 you know, being in the group for a while now and seeing when the new intakes come in mm -hmm. and and you have to go back to that hammer mode, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I didn't have a day I've realized it. you're ebbing your flow. I've realized you're ebbing <laughs> your flow, you know? <laughs> there's about, there's because the intakes are, the intakes are, and I understand why the intakes have to be strategic, you know, have to be time, you know? It's not just right. a, a rolling basis because, of course, of course. you know, you got to get people up to speed. And it's funny when you get people up to speed, then you shift to a different mode, yeah. you know? And it's like, yeah. I've realized it's about, there's about three modes yeah. <laughs> Three modes. Yeah. I, I interesting. Tell me about these modes. I want to hear them myself. You know, there's this like you're shifting back into hammer mode because there's been a new group coming yes, in. Okay. And, and 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 that hammer mode, it's a, it's a loving hammer. You know, there's all of sorts course. of facets of love. And this is again, this is another reason that I that I 100 percent endorse the group because you you need these things if you're going to be profitable. Yes. Yes. You just yes. need to understand these things. Mm hmm. And that's hammer mode. You yeah. know, hammer mode is, mm. I don't really want to hear it until you've, go, until you've gone through the course. Yes. Yeah. Until you've, until you've gone through the course and have understood what we mean when we talk about all of these fundamental numbers. Mm -hmm. That's just chill. Just chill. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. But it's like, because we all come in, especially when folks come from that technical world. Mm -hmm. You 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 want to make and they tell you the twenty four hour market. Yeah, you know I, I, I want to make money right now. Yeah, yeah. You know and 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 even for the technical trader, if if you if you're wise, you learn that it ain't really true. Mm -hmm. You know, even for the technicals, you learn that it's not a twenty four hour market. Yes, it's open twenty four hours, and they will take your money twenty four hours a day. <laughs> 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 excellent, but excellent. Point. It ain't moving twenty four hours a day. Mm -hmm. You, you know, know key level but for sure when fundamentals come to play you understand mm -hmm. it ain't moving mm -hmm. and so why am i going to put my capital at risk when it ain't moving exactly that is a brilliant brilliant thing right because because generally traders will come in and just take any level of support and resistance oh man and, demand and so both. hammer mode you, you and hammer exactly. mode this is what i see hammer mode you're forcing the new intake to understand mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah. Not even wait because you don't know enough yet. No, wait because wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no rush. There's no rush. It's you not know? time yet. It's, yeah. it's not time yet. You yeah. have time to learn the course. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then there's that mode after folks get through, you know, their objections to simply observing the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's the teacher. Yeah. You know, because now you start to realize the conversation in the group starts to shift. And now people are asking questions about these numbers. Yes. And, and, and they're not the questions that really want to force the numbers to mean something else. Mm. You can see that they're now the questions of inquiry mm-hmm. where they're trying to understand how to make use of these numbers. Mm. And so now you're a teacher. Yeah. And then that third stage is where we're all engaged together. Mm. You know, and now, and, yeah. and now I've noticed you start taking opportunity to throw out more ideas that people may not agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you're not worried about throwing out ideas yeah, that you because, don't agree it, with. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. And whether you agree or not, again, going back to, um, you know, I guess maybe back to, but maybe moving on, with with you and you're quite and I was saying this again before before we started recording is that you're quite unique in a sense that you've taken the uh the fundamental um I guess the, the concept geopolitics and you've really kind of ran with it to the point where and I and I really do appreciate this where and we've bumped heads with certain things as you know right <laughs> we bumped heads but it's been it's been a a, a good experience a great experience right, right. The, and and for the community because it just demonstrates that we can all make money in the market regardless of you know everyone following each other right so right. you know you get you get certain groups where every it's like it's like a school of fish yeah everyone moves in the same direction but you know what i mean it's it's a it's a case of um you know it, the, the, the trading is more dynamic than that right yeah. and if you can and, and if you can understand that you can stand on your own to as a you know as an individual and make those trading decisions from top to bottom, from the fundamentals to the technicals, you know, I'm not always taking the same trade as you. You're not always taking the same trade as me, but we get to the same destination on our Imagine. trading, on our training accounts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bottom line but, on top. <laughs> yeah. But it's, a, but, but you followed your process. I followed a process. Yeah. Right. And the process is pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the right. same, although we might be looking at different pairs. And anyone who's listening to this, if you understand the fundamentals, if you come into the group, you'll understand, look, this is not a cookie cutter. This is not just I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you that idea. I'm going to tell you where to place your trade and your stop loss and, you know, you're going to you'll take profit. Yes, I will guide you. There are options, but I'm trying to create independently profitable traders and um, you know, Jarbread is a, is, a, is a shining example of somebody who has taken that concept and literally, you know, ran with it. <laughs> you know, and literally ran with I'm it. Right, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. You know, and oh. um, I do appreciate that. So, in fact, this will be a great segue to move on to, um, I guess, showing us one of your latest or the last trade idea um that you gave to the group because it's funny because I went back during to the discord and I was like I'm sure you said this you were the first person to mention this trade and I know which trade it's going to be yeah <laughs> <laughs> right but I was I'm sure that you were the person to, to to mention this trade idea and again this is an example of I didn't personally take this trade but it, the, it like the process of this trade was just was 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 a fundamental divergent trade that's basically right. what we're doing right right so so talk us through first of all what was CAD. The yeah Aussie that was Aussie CAD. Sell, yeah selling Aussie the Aussie CAD. CAD. right Aussie CAD this year right at the beginning of this year so let's go to the Aussie CAD and um and so, uh, yeah, talk us through maybe, you know, just just the, from the, the fundamentals from top to bottom. So why this currency pair fund, fundamentally? Well, from, a, from, a, from a broad strokes perspective, I was looking at this pair. You know, we talk about commodity pairs 
um, a lot. This is one of the areas where we kind of bump heads because you don't yes. like buying commodity pairs. Commodities against commodities. Yeah, I, that's exactly. Um, I, don't, I don't like that. Um, but I see it as more, and I'm understanding more how to explain it to you, right? And maybe this is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. I see it more as my performance play in my portfolio. Okay. You know, um, which one of the commodities? So, so I've noticed we're in a stage post Corona or in Corona post Corona um, that the Western economies are not shutting down. And so, which means they're not stopping looking for yield. Mm -hmm. And even in times when, when, when times get rough, they're not stopping looking for yield. They're just looking for better strategic placement of that yield. Mm -hmm. for, my, for, 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 for me, what that means is which one of these commodity currencies am I going to place my bets on? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get yield somewhere. Where is best suited to get this yield? For a time, it was New Zealand mm -hmm. um, in 2021. For a time, it was New Zealand because their economy was clicking on all cylinders. All of their numbers were great. Their um, unemployment had came down to pre-pandemic levels um, early 2021. Uh, their central bank raised interest rates and it was projected to continue hiking. I mean, all cylinders were go and they were economy that was doing this all when everyone else was, was stalled. Mm -hmm. That shifted once they shifted from, from, um, from COVID zero to living with the virus. That shifted. It was mm -hmm. the same shift that we see already with the Aussie, mm -hmm. which is why I'm bearish Aussie. Aussie also shifted away from COVID zero as well as they've geopolitics now they've um chosen a brexit like move in cutting themselves off from 40 percent of their trade um in their trading spat with china uh because they've been siding with the u.s um and so they australia has made a decision to choose their military political partner over their economic partner and so it's going to take some time to see how that works out for them this is also coinciding with their fundamental numbers being sluggish. Um, you know, they, they are having a rough time switching from COVID zero to living with the, vi the virus. They're in and out of lockdown still. Um, you know, their hospitalizations are on the rise. All kinds of stuff is going crazy over there. Um, and so they're going to have a hard time for quite some time. Uh, the, the Reserve Bank of Australia is saying that, they, that they're still remaining dovish. Um, you know, them and, the, them and the Europeans are the most dovish central banks out there now. So, so dovish, oh. when you say dovish, just for anyone still listening. Oh, sorry, maybe, sorry. You know, <laughs> just, just, just maybe break that down a little bit. They, 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 are, they, are, they are remaining loose in their monetary policy. They are re keeping their bond buying going. They are um, not raising their interest rates. Yeah, so they're, so they're looking to basically not increase the, the value or appreciate their currency at the moment. Correct. Yeah, that would be easy. That would be the yeah. best way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not looking to do anything uh, monetary policy wise to appreciate their currency, to make their currency right. a bit stronger. That's basically what that is. Yeah. And in the meantime, so you have. You have New Zealand coming back down because it's just shifted off of COVID zero. You have mm -hmm. Australia that is whew, good day almighty. So where am I going to get yield if I'm a commodity currency person? Right. So the Australian the dollar, Canadian dollar. Exactly. So the Australian dollar is not doing great. The Canadian dollar, on the other hand, is poised to, to start rising, especially with oil prices being at their lows and coming off their lows. Um, with economies not shutting down and will needing and will be needing that to resume supply chains and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, the Canadian dollar should be poised to see a boom. In addition to that, the the, the Bank of Canada is is has been showing its hawkish muscles, meaning that it's making people think that they will raise interest rates and might even raise them sooner than people were anticipating. Um, you know, things are looking on the up, on the on the fiscal side, the um, on the governmental side, the, you know, Justin Trudeau's party has a, a has a solid majority in the federal government, which means that they are raising taxes, which, you know, this is another area where we butt heads is on MMT. You're not really into it, right. but I'm not into it either. I just understand what it is. It's not about yeah. being in for me. It's not about being into it or out of it. You know what I mean? It's just yeah, the reality of what it is. Yeah. Which says that 
you know, fiscal in order for in order for monetary policy to 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 take a backseat, fiscal policy needs to take over. The only re way fiscal policy to, can take over is if you have a majority in the in the parliament in the governmental structure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there will be too much arguing, and that's what you're seeing in America right now. With this with this um with this governmental imbalance, which will only get worse, you know, you're seeing that. The Biden agenda is not getting passed, so on and so forth. And so the, the, the central bank is, is on edge, may have to, you know, stay off of some of its hawkishness. But be that as it may, the Canadian dollar is poised to start throttling. So for me, I'm looking for a good level to get short on the Aussie CAD. Because mm. it's also a trade that I, because I understand that you're not looking at it, mm -hmm. I also understand that a lot of people aren't looking at it. And I... Mm. There's something for me about fishing where I know there's fish, but not mm -hmm. a lot of people go. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for a, a, a level to go short off of. And I'm noticing that weekly, on the weekly, it's a trend line down too. It's a nice channel on the weekly. Right. Okay. And we're at a great point for the continuation of that end wave. And that was back on, the, actually, I got in on the 30th, which is another thing, you know what I mean? Y'all in the group are like, I'm not trading at the end of the year. I'm like, I'm looking for a discount. I'm looking for <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was looking <laughs> I was for that looking discount for too. I'm looking uh, for a Christmas special. <laughs> listen, I wanted that discount. I missed, I missed some profitable trades not trading over Christmas, man. I really did. And some really nice 200 pip, you know, 300 pip moves. So, yeah, you know, so that, I got that, into that on the yeah. 30th. Yeah, I got into it on the thirtieth. Brilliant, oh. brilliant, right there. Thirtieth. But it was, you know, I was hoping it was going to get higher because in the weekly, I was hoping it might have came back to fair value on the weekly. But it, it right. things were just too, things were just too weak for the Australian dollar. Right. Yeah. Uh, so now it's just a matter of see how does it continue in that channel? Um, does it? What happens at that recent low? Right. By the way, the, 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 I have to just point this out to, to the watchers. Generally, um, you know, from a fundamental perspective, what we're looking to do is pick the direction of the trade, right? How you get into it technically is ultimately up to the trader, right? right. It's up to you. Right. I personally don't, you know, teach or, or, or subscribe to you know, things like channels, I'm, you know, uh, you guys follow the channel, I'm, you know, supply and demand strategies, capture pain relief, um, uh, stop hunt strategies. But one of the things that fundamentals allows you to do is really kind of trade any strategy. Yeah, because as long yeah. as you have the levels and the direction, yeah, that you want to trade in, then it's just a case of looking for trades in that direction. Now, now let me be clear. The, the entry was off of a three-hour supply zone. Okay. An intraday okay. Supply, supply zone. The, the, right. the, 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 the reality of the channel was just confluence. Right. Okay. You know, the rea to be honest, the reality is because I don't trade channels either. I don't trade trend line bounces. I trade supply zones and I, and I, and I use Ichimoku as well. Right. Yeah. Um, um, but you got but in, yeah, on, a, you got I in got on a... In on a on a three hour, on an intraday, on a three hour, on a on a on a supply zone. Brilliant. So that was somewhere around this uh, zero point nine three to maybe zero point nine two eighty level, somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, I got in at nine two eight one four to be exact. Nine two eight one four. What a trade! Look at that. So that would have been short position nine two eight one. Yeah, somewhere like that and stop loss somewhere stop loss was nine two eight eight four nine two eight in tight one nine two yeah. eight, eight you know four. me i trade tight Bloody i trade tight hell, brother because <laughs> <laughs> I, I i told you it was a three hour zone but i refined down to the five minute right that was like an eight pip stop Seven yeah pip stop yeah well done, man. Uh, by the way, I don't, I don't personally. Again, this is this is the beauty. <laughs> this is, but this is this is you no. Know, but this is this is this is one of the beauties of, uh, I guess, trading in a sense that we want to stick as closely to the process as possible. This is what I teach one hundred percent. Right. Right. 
I could I, I say to everybody, stick as closely to the process as possible. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, if you can use the concepts that I teach, but adapt it in a way where you're profitable, at the end of the day, it's all about profit. You know what I mean? It is about profit. But if you're not profitable, yeah, and you're struggling, I would say stick to the process. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, Jarbread has obviously, you know, found his niche in the way that he trades technically, yeah, which benefits him, which is, and this is fantastic. I'm so glad. And are you still in this trade, by the way? I am. I actually added in mm. at, um, I added in at, Nine two two four nine. Nine two two right. So the pullback on that daily, up in there. Nine two two four nine to somewhere around here. Oh, okay, back in this. I think didn't, right. um Didn't um ah oh, who was it again? It was. It I think was I think Dr. Lawrence got in. I think Doctor Ninja. I think it was Doctor yeah. Ninja as well. Yeah, got in, got in, Dr. Got, Ninja got, in got in on that one as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. And then you ended up um. So I'm still uh, holding both. So you're still holding both. Yeah. Brilliant. Because I, I want to see what's happening down at that recent low. Brilliant. So remember, yeah. and this is where the fundamentals comes into play, right? Because remember, right. the banks are now calling for that level to break. Right. Yes. Excellent. And this is where I guess um, one of the questions I guess I had for you was that um, a lot of traders who don't trade fundamentals, um, they, they, they tend to think or there's this general consensus that the, the, the banks are misleading traders and they're trying to, you know, um, bamboozle traders into taking <laughs> the other side and the wrong side of the trade. Right. There's a conspiracy. Or, right. um, of some sort, right? Don't listen right. to the news. The news is trying to mislead you. Don't listen to the media, right? And there is some truth. There is that. some truth to that, yeah. Yeah. But in the way that we understand fundamentals and the way that we follow the banks, yeah, right. in our group, it's the total opposite, right? We use it as confluence. Right. And, you know, I would say there's, there's some truth to the media piece. I don't oh. know if there's any truth to the bank piece. I don't think the banks right. are misleading anyone when it comes to those things. I think, right. I think we just have it, the majority of us just have it so set in our minds mm. that they're screwing with us. That, and, and that um, collides with the other psychological realities of trading that make us take levels that end up being capture pain relief, that make us take levels that end up being stop hunted. Mm. Like, if you understand the psychology of what's happening, you understand exactly why it was a quote-unquote stop hunt. Right. Was that bank manipulation? Mm. Or was that really that people were late to the trend and buying at the top? Mm. Like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so we can get caught up in there manipulating or we can, you know, just understand the reality and wait, this is good. You know, I don't know if this part, I can't remember if this part was recorded or not, but that goes back to the hammer mode, right? Like, yeah, you got to yeah, learn yeah. to wait, like, yeah. wait, wait, there's yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, I mean, I, I just want to make this clear as well. I'm not saying that, you know, banks don't, um, you know, aren't misleading in some way, shape or form. So for example, not to go off tangent too much, but for example, JP Morgan last year were found to manipulate, you know, the silver market, for example, got fined. Oh for yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. these things and, and, are... and, and we also know like Michael Hudson talks about in, in a couple of videos about how they've gotten $10 trillion. The U.S. banks have gotten $10 trillion last year. Yeah. I mean, we like, can, we can, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we can, we so can, there's a lot going on. I'm not yeah, saying there, there that. Is. But 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 bringing it back, I guess, to what how we use that bank information within the group, yeah, it aids us, right? When we see right. bank forecasts, you know, more often than not, they're not trying to mislead their um, they're, 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 they're capital investors. They're exactly. Not. They're not trying to mislead them, right? <laughs> if anything, they're trying, they, they, they got the track record. And when they put I guess that's the difference. Up, I'm glad you say that because that's the difference. When we talk, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what you may hear on the news for the consumer, yeah, that's, that's misleading. 
Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. but what's what's being sent to the people who are investing real money with these banks? They're not trying to mislead those people. Exactly. And, because and if we, they mislead those people, they ain't going to get that money again. Exactly. And we just ride those that coattails, their coattails, right? We, we look right. at their forecasts, we look at their analysis, and then we say, this is where they're going. And more often than not, they will, it will go in that direction. Will, uh, right? But you got to wait. You got to be but patient. You, you got to wait. And you've got and that's, to that to me is the benefit of the group, right? And, and, yeah. and, and the camaraderie that's developed between those who, who, who become and remain active. And, you know, because people come and go. You know, because it's not, it's not, it's not, there's no forced participation. And mm. some more people, some people gravitate to different levels, of course. you know, but, but the, 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 the benefit of the group is, you learn, you, you're surrounded by that culture of patience. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I got anxious and got into a trade early just the other day on that pound cat. I'm still looking at that. Mm. And, and, and Lawrence was like, I'm still waiting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. And I had, to, I had to come back at the close of the day and be honest. And like, yo, you were, right to, you were right yeah. to wait. I should have listened to you. Yeah, I saw the comment. <laughs> I saw the comment. <laughs> but but again, it's learning with others, learning in the group. Right. You know what I mean? And and that reinforced um learning and um and, and the education and uh and and everything like that. So um so yeah, to, to kind of just I guess wrap the uh the um the uh interview up and thank you for doing this, by the way. Really, really appreciate it, really in depth. Um and um I just want to say like if you had anything to say to anybody who was maybe on the fence with joining trading 180 and they were like kind of umming and ahhing about it what would you uh, what would you say to them <laughs> <laughs> i say this i say this give it a shot yeah and give it a shot i laugh like this because leon may cut this piece out <laughs> give it a shot. Give it a shot at the lifetime membership level because <laughs> no, it's gonna, too cheap. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that out. But, but cut um, that out. or maybe, or maybe I won't. Or maybe I won't. But, <laughs> but, but, but you know what? But, but, but no, no, no. Give, yeah. let me, but if you cut that out, you know, pause. Yeah. I would say give it a shot because it it is worth. The, you're gonna spend if you if you are serious about trying to learn to trade, you're gonna spend a ton of money on this and on that and on all kinds of things. Um, you owe it to yourself to give it a shot. And, and, and like Leon said, trust the process. Um, before you deviate from the process, speaking as someone who deviates from the process, trust yeah. the process yeah. before you deviate from the process and see, mm -hmm. and give it a shot. See how, see how it goes. See what your development is. I, I guarantee you that if you invest yourself, like if you participate, um, if you engage in the content and with the group, you'll grow. Um, I mean, and that's 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 what it's about at the end of the day. Will you grow? And how did you grow? And if you if you if you can say you grow, then you know it's worth it. And so uh, that's what I would say. Give it a shot and um, you know, add job bread when you're in the group and cuss me out if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, thank you so much for that. And um, again, I'll see you in the group, my man. And um, brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on hey, and giving it your... It was uh, fun. It yeah. was fun, man. It was fun. Yeah. I appreciate doing this with you. And I appreciate what you do. So, thank, you. Um, thank you, my man. Thank you. Yeah. Much appreciated. All right. All right. Peace.